What is up, everybody? We are back. This is George I. Courtright. And as you can see, I am not alone this week. Brought somebody back. Who are you? Aaron Atkins. And before we get into everything, uh, I'm just going to do what they usually do at the beginning of sporting events. Uh, we're we're going to salute the, the flag and uh, hold out for the national anthem. Uh, you don't have a hat. I have a hat. I left uh, it in the car. Uh, well, we're, <laughs> we're taking it off, and we are going to uh, have a national anthem. All right. Now we got that over with. Or fucking not. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, like, halfway through that, Fergie looks like she should have been stripping like Marilyn Monroe when she was singing to John F. Kennedy. Uh, it, yeah, and that's it. really what it sounds like. You ain't supposed to make the national anthem sound sexy. No. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> Mr. President. My, what the hell? I was waiting for this bitch to sit down. Like, oh, I was like, man. like who's going to talk to her after this? Like, oh, she. Like, you can never go back on. On national TV and seeing this shit like that ever again. Do it. Uh, well, I don't think she's gonna get uh, asked to sing the national anthem uh, ever again That's because of that. Man. Because um, it was an artistic uh, choice that she made. Really? Uh, that's, no. an, that's an artistic choice. You know, she could have sang that, you know, everybody, they put the influx here's and there's, the falsettos here's and there's, how long they're gonna hold that, uh, that free. The, the free note? Now, hold on a second. There had to have been a rehearsal for this shit. Oh, you that... need to tell me that somebody actually listened to this so, yeah, and yes. decided that this sounded okay to put on national television, yes. which you know children are going to be watching and everybody which, else, yes. so that we can scrutinize the fuck out of it later on. It, yo, and they might have did that on purpose. Like, hey... She she's an artist. Some people may like it. It some people might say it's one of the best. Some because uh Marvin Gaye wasn't it Marvin Gaye that uh did it and had that little synthesizer in the background. I don't dink know if that was. Dink 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 dink. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, go, I go check that out. That. Uh, rem, let me write that down. Oh, let, let me put that that was wrong. Link for Marvin Gaye's. Yeah. I think it was Marvin Gaye's uh, Every, rendition. Everything about that national anthem was wrong. Every last bit of it. Uh, somebody on social media put, like was commenting on that, and I was, and I, I made sure to put my comment. I said, uh, "You ain't supposed to make the national anthem sound sexy." Uh, every now, now before every time I fucks, I'm gonna play that. <laughs> <laughs> Take my hat off, <laughs> and then it's times the fucks. Are you ready for this stroke? Girl? Are you? Uh, oh shh, shh, shh. shh. Yeah, and you can't put the condom on yet, right? Because you ain't supposed to wear hats. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm expecting only a moment of silence before this. Only more, not after. So, all right, so we jump right in, but let's backtrack once again. This is George I. Cartwright. This is Aaron Atkins, and we are back with a mad week. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for joining us. Um, pretty much. Everything that I did this past weekend is a story. Uh, did you actually watch the All-Star Game? I watched some of it. Uh, I was watching the dunk contest where they were having so many bloopers that it just oh, seemed see, like it, it was a fail reel. Yeah. It, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I thought the dunk contest was coming back because uh, in some years it just slacked like a motherfucker. Right. But then this year there was um, some good creativity if they would have made it on their first dunk. Man, w wasn't there only one dunk that made it on first dunk? Mm -hmm. And it was like maybe like one or two. Turns in, like yeah. Oh, no. Well, uh, and I liked how the one guy—I think it was the guy that actually won—where on his first attempt he did one dunk, he missed it, so he just did a different one. So therefore, that second dunk was the first attempt. Because right. if I already see what you're trying to do, and you miss that, and then you make it, it's not the same. First of all, I don't even think he should have won that. Homeboy dribbled the fucking ball off oh. the backboard twice and then yeah. slammed it into the hole. Son, but, like, there's people out there right now that wish they had that hang time and they play pro ball. He's tall as a motherfucker, though. Still. He, that was he sick is the junior, the junior of a previous slam dunk winner. That was sick as fuck, though. And But 
real time, and that it's all based on the judges. And I don't think the judges have the uh, replay in yeah, front of them. Right. In real time, I didn't even notice it. I didn't even notice it. It was when the replay is like, did you, let's do it in replay. And then I don't think the commentators even knew it. I, and replay, like, oh shit, he he bounced it again. Yeah, we I saw it twice. I, like like I saw it hit, and then I was like. He dribbled it off of the backboard. And then they showed the replay in slow motion. I was like, he did dribble it off the backboard. Yeah, Like, I, I was tripping. I, uh, my brother was tripping. My dad was tripping. We were all sitting up there watching it. Yeah, I didn't I didn't catch it uh, the first time. But I, if they would have made their dunks the first damn time, it would have been cool. I like the creativity. Uh, so, uh, it, it'll have me back. It'll right. have me back. I, I'll be watching it again next year. Uh, I think I just, it's really been slacking, so I really haven't paid attention. But I was excited about the whole change in uh, the format for the All-Star game. Yeah. The the street ball, pick your, pick your own team type shit. So I uh, thought I watched the whole thing, plus the celebrity game. I watched that the I night before. I didn't see the celebrity game. Was that good? Uh, and for the most part, no. Not really. Oh, well, uh, there are some good parts to it. Uh, it was cool. The thing I was uh, watching is because... My good friend's high school buddy's son is Miles Brown, the uh, the little kid on yeah, Blackish. Yeah. So uh, I've been supporting him, watching all that oh, that's stuff. Tight. So uh, he he played. He, he got two points. <laughs> got two points. So uh, that was damn cool. Hey, everybody gets theirs, right? Oh, and yeah. uh, we we got a salute uh, the local uh, Suns player for winning the three point contest. Right? Devin Booker. Now, can you win some playoff games, though? Now, can you win some games? Shit. They ain't getting to no playoff this year. Well, maybe next year. Shit. All right, maybe like next year. We need some kind of a uh, big-name free agent. It's yeah. just, it's going to be hard. It's going to be hard. We need a big-name free agent. I swear to God, the Suns ain't been shit since the 90s. I don't give a fuck what y'all say. No. No. Uh, Stoudemire and Nash. I don't give a fuck what they say. Stoudem Man, come on. Nope. You, 90s. You, St Bulls, nope. Suns. Nope. Like, Stoudemire. Like, Stoudemire. That, that was the shit. Everything uh, else, bootleg. Rajon Rondo, bootleg. No, not Rondo. Who's who's a Brazilian dude? You got me, got me. Uh, not Rajon Rondo. He's a little Brazilian guy. The b b Brazilian blur. The, the Brazilian blur. Yeah. You don't remember that moment? If man, see, I'm I'm all I'm all excited right now, so I can't remember names. Okay. But anyways. Uh, and then you said you watched some of the actual All Star game. Yeah, uh, I watched a little bit of it, but after that, I was just kind of like, eh, and I just went and just was playing video games and ch chilling with my son. Cool. Uh, I actually enjoyed it a lot better than any other All Star game that didn't have Jordan. I should say <laughs> that didn't have Jordan. Any, uh, but once again, I really haven't been paying too much attention since uh, Jordan left and since they just. It'll be like 212 to 200, you know, because there's no defense. They were playing defense on this one, and it, it was cool. Uh, one team was down, uh, LeBron's team was down by like 13 at one point, came back, and ended up playing some D to actually win by a couple points. Hmm. So, uh, so defense actually won a game. Defense actually, they, like, uh, in the last few minutes, they were doing traps, like backcourt traps and shit. Oh, shit. Yeah. Okay. It got serious. Yeah. It yeah. got serious. So, uh, I actually appreciated that shit. I really did appreciate that game. Yeah, when they start playing hard ball like that and the defense gets real strong and they're trying to keep you from even moving the ball to the other side of the court, you know it's real. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it was, it was they like, had something to prove that night. Yeah, they had, well, there was uh, charity money in, involved. I think uh, the winner's charity got $350,000. The loser's charity got $150,000. So, they were doing that. Plus... It was kind of a street ball feel to it, so it got more personal to people. Oh, okay. You know, some people were going against their own teammates and shit. Because <laughs> uh, yeah. Kevin Durant was going against uh, Stephen Curry yeah. and shit. So, it, it, I like that. I'm sure they're definitely going to keep the format. Because yeah, but you got to figure those guys play each other and practice all the time anyway. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Well... They're, they're starters, so most likely they're going to be playing oh, together. Team together, yeah. So. Instead of playing against each other, yeah, here's that, and there. But then again, they they they're playing against each other in practice. But this is in front of the world, so right, it's right. gonna have a different 
uh, feel for it. Right. Cool. Uh, so we talked about the dunk contest. We talked about the three point contest. We talked about the actual game. We talked about Fergie and her foibles. Thanks. <laughs> Fergie, why? Uh, why? Now, now, the reason I made sure to have you on here this week is because oh, this past weekend shit. was the uh, introduction to the Marvel Universe, Black Panther. And Black I'm Panther. Wearing my shirt, and, son. What? He's wearing his shirt. Uh, and honestly... I was going to buy a shirt to go uh, wear it to the movie because I saw it Thursday. Yeah. I saw it the, the night that it came out and shit. Uh, s- kept seeing one on Instagram. Like okay. A, uh, like a commercial or whatever. It was like, eh, eh, eh. Then about two days before, I was like, you know what? I'm going to get it. <laughs> I'm going to get that shirt. And then it said, oh, it ain't going to be to you until March 19th. Yeah. Like, everything was all pre-ordered out, man. Like, but, you would go into the stores, and, like, you could find, like, some rinky-dink shit, but uh, you weren't finding any quality stuff, because that stuff was bought up already. I wasn't trying to buy no rinky-dink shit, and plus, I'm not usually buying too many t-shirts with shit like that on it. That's I just, do. Just not my style, but this one just, it caught my eye, kept catching my eye, and it's Black Panther. With yeah. a crown like Biggie. Yeah. Oh shit! That yeah, I saw that shirt. Oh, I, I had that shirt to get was it. Tight. I, so one of these shows you gonna see me wearing that shit. <laughs> I had to get it. That's tight. but I, it just took too long to pull the trigger on it. So what do you think of the movie? What did you think of it? Uh, I thought it was pretty damn good. Uh, for all of you want to see the actual uh, review review uh, the night of. My uh, viewing of it, go on uh, my YouTube page, uh, Magic Entertainment, M-A-D-G-I-C Entertainment, and check out the review. But I will go over it with Aaron here. Uh, I thought it was fucking great. Uh, The story was cool, especially how they put some of the social uh, shit into it. Yeah. Uh, The visuals were fucking amazing, especially uh, on the waterfall with the colors and stuff. That was amazing. And that was cool. What I really liked, uh, I was paying attention a lot to, was the costumes. And the oh, costumes yeah, and yeah. Um, how they, you know, were talking about the different tribes and that were part of Wakanda. And how different they were, not only in, you know, their beliefs and everything, but in their dress and their attire, their yep. weapons, everything. Yep. And I thought that was dope. They took a lot of those ideas from existing tribes in Africa. Oh, absolutely. And absolutely. You know, the styling of the whole movie, the way that they filmed it, the way that the, uh, you know, the verbiage that was used, um, you know, I was, uh, I kind of snickered at the fact that they were calling, uh, you know, some of the white guys colonizers. 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 I was like, damn. I was like, oh, that, 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 they let that fly? They let that fly? But when you really think about it, if you were closed off from the rest of the world and you were fighting against being colonized and you were hiding from the rest of the world... You would call them. Yeah, that. exactly. I you, absolutely understood, you know, but you know, invaders it, or colonizers and it's, stuff like that. It's still it, Marvel is still backed by a lot of white money, so I was surprised. But here's, it, here's, it seems like they here's just my, let it go just to just to see. Here's my thing about that uh-huh. because D- Disney's very liberal about that type of stuff. You mm-hmm. know, especially when it comes to cultural diversity. Right. Shit, we all saw the last Star Wars. There was oh, yeah. cultural diversity yeah, everywhere, yeah, yeah, yeah. which a yeah, lot of yeah. people hated. Uh, well, there's I, a lot of fucking haters out there. Yeah. there. If you fucking uh, don't like the whole diversity shit, or uh, I know there's people out there who's like, oh, why is uh, this black movie with a, is getting so much hype and shit? It, like, you're fucking stupid. Come on, man. So I was, I was talking to somebody about that, and, um, you know, it, it, uh, it's pretty damn dumb that uh, people... Their first excuse is like, well, all they did was just line a bunch of white people's money. I was like, no, they didn't. They may have lined their money, their pockets with money, but they also lined a lot of black folks' you know, pockets with money. And they also brought together a lot of black folks and delivered a message to them about working together and not closing themselves off from the rest of the people that, that want to be a part of our lives. You know, uh, that spoke to me across several different cultures. You know, it's not just blacks that they were speaking to about that stuff. Um, so I, I 
Yeah, I because think that that's, same, a, that's a weak argument for me. Mm. That's a really weak argument. That same and thing could have been, uh, can be said about white people block, blocking themselves off against black people. Yeah. Uh, or any other color. Or like, oh, we, we should just stick to our own. Yeah. Uh, do this. No. Expand. You know, teach everybody else so everybody else can be str- as strong as you so we can be one and fucking fight all these other fucking evils together. Because regardless of what everybody thinks of that, like, what Wakanda was actually exercising there was a form of segregation. And by the end of the movie, they had desegregated themselves from the rest of the world and they were right. coming out and explaining to them, like, no, we're just not a nation of farmers. You know, this is what we have to offer. You know? Um, that also sets a, sets the stage for a lot of different storylines in Marvel that oh, makes sense yep. because of all the vibranium and everything. You know, Black Panther originally uh, debuted in the Fantastic Four, where Reed Richards was trying to get a hold of some of that vibranium and all the other stuff. He wanted to know where it came from, and come to find out, it was Wakanda, and he was there, and he was you know around Black Panther and everything. And that's how he got some of the the vibranium to be able to do the experiments that he was doing. Um, and I'm going to see that. Uh, that's going to be a big part of like Infinity War and everything because that technology is going to wash over into the rest of the Marvel world. You know that's that's a that's a big thing. Um, I also like the uh, the character development around Shuri, his little sister. Oh yeah, which was yeah, amazing. She, yeah, she was badass. That handshake though, right? Uh, you know what I'm talking about? No, I don't remember. I don't remember it. I don't remember it. I don't remember it. Okay, I don't remember it. The 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 cross. Oh, oh, okay, man. yeah, yeah, you all right. You failed. I remember. You failed. I, I did. You failed. I did. There was so much that I was trying to pick up that one little handshake. Uh, then, then I, I remember it though. Yeah, I remember. We're kind of forever, man. Like yes. you gotta remember that. But that, you know, cool. like everything, like the way that they, you know, they they were uh, joking around and the way that they delivered a lot of their lines. I like that. It's what are those? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that she was talking out. hella shit. Yeah. And I love that because, you know, it, it was a reflection of how she is in the comic book towards her brother. And mm-hmm. and that's that's pretty cool. Um, it also set up a lot for her existing character later on. Mm-hmm. Um, and her, excuse me, her existing character development later on, which is going to be also a big part if they want to use that. Um, uh, so because I'm very it, it reminds me it. of, uh, was it Q in the James Bond films? Uh, so I like that that that's kind of the feel that it gave, and plus there's uh the pretty much that first uh, fighting scene in uh, what Korea or whatever uh, the casino. Oh yeah, yeah, that, yeah, yeah, that yeah, had yeah. a yeah. James Bond feel too. Because I doubt if we're ever gonna get a black James Bond, which I really don't want a black James Bond. James Bond's a white dude. Leave the motherfucker as white. We well, don't want, we don't want to see a fucking uh, white shaft. So, leave James Bond white. Well, so, I mean, like, James Bond is just the name, a code name for that, for that agent. So, it doesn't really necessarily matter what color he is. Man. It just James so Bond, happens James Bond. that he's every white. actor since back then, well, keep in mind, back then, like, there were barely any black actors being used for lead roles, though. When Bill they first Cosby. designed it. <laughs> when they first designed that character. But you're talking about, like, black exploitation <laughs> films Leonard. and, like, comedies Leonard. and shit like that. <laughs> like, no, like, like those are comedies. And even in the toy, you know, he was basically bought and sold to a kid. No, that's Richard Pryor. Yeah, you oh, you said Leonard. Okay, yeah, Richard Pryor. You know, yeah. and he was the lead in that movie. Yeah. Okay, like, like, like we've progressed pretty high to now it's acceptable that we can have a black superhero as the lead character in this film in a completely black culture yes. that featured almost all black actors yes in in the entire film and it sold it sold as matter it fact, made it made records and shit you, oh fact, i didn't fucking put the... sold the justice league's oh, entire yeah. pot in yeah. 4 days yeah uh what is it the second it was second uh for the marvels yeah. Yeah, second for the Marvels, which if, is saying a lot. If you would have told me that that was going to happen, that Black Panther was going to outsell the Justice League, I would have laughed at you. No, I... But the I, recent I, look at some of these films that DC and uh, Warner Brothers have been, re- you know, releasing, you know, their content hasn't been all that great. Whereas Marvel has been consistent with Oh, that very content. consistent. Very consistent. You know, uh, the directors and, that they're picking and choosing to do these movies uh, have been right on point for the most part. 
Uh, I don't think you've been here since uh, Justice League came out. What uh, what, do you, what did you think about Justice League? Uh, it was about a B minus movie. It was uh, pretty solid uh, as far as like the story and everything. Uh -huh. um, the dialogue felt kind of forced, uh -huh. um, and that's only because they tried to put humor into it uh, into some of the characters. Uh, one of the characters yep. that uh, which is okay, but it has to be natural. See, yeah, like yeah. comedy comes natural uh, in its delivery for it to be really effective. You right. can't really like force jokes a across because it really comes off as not really making sense. No, or... and that's why I think uh, uh, Robert Downey for Iron Man is like because that, that his comedy just just comes and it seems so fucking Perfect. natural. He's he's a fucking trip. And not only that, like if you read the comics and the way like his pacing as he speaks and everything, it pretty much matches you know Robert Downey's style. If you, if you like slow it down and you know, you keep it at the same level of how he speaks and everything and use that same dialogue that you would in the comic book and it will actually kind of match his style as the way it's actually written so he was actually pretty perfect for that character i i, I like robert downey as, as iron man like, oh yeah and like it's, it's gonna never be protested it's that. gonna be sad to see when it's gonna have to all go back to zero and it's gonna be some new actors coming in just like wolverine uh, Hugh Jackman was the perfect Wolverine, but he did his last one with Logan. Uh, it's gonna whoever's the next one. They can't find the right Spider Man. No, you don't. Know, well, <laughs> Holland is the right Spider Man. That uh, Tom Holland is is an amazing Spider Man. I still and the uh, why, oh uh, an amazing Spider Man. Well, not, <laughs> he's an amazing actor for the, to play Spider Man because he has the physique to pull it off. Not only that, he represents. Master. Well, he's actually really good at um. At, uh, he's been learning uh, martial arts, and he's really good at uh, parkour. Mm -hmm. So he has the agility and the gymnastics ability to be able to pull off some of the, the closer scenes, which is cool. But w what they're also focusing on is a different path of the storyline, which is more of the Ultimate Spider-Man storyline, where they went back and told uh, Peter's younger story of him first becoming Spider-Man as a kid in our day and age. So when I first started reading that comic book, I was like, oh, this is dope because he's getting a representation that's, you know, after 2001, that's when, you know, around when that came out. After 2001, and at that time we had cell phones, we had social media, like all that was actually starting to boom. So it did feel like it was uh, Peter Parker coming from, you know, our time right now in the times of, you know, what's go actually going on. So it was actually, it felt like it held some kind of relevancy, you know, whereas Peter's original story was originally told back in the 60s. Oh, yeah, when they didn't have that shit. They didn't have when, anything. Uh, yeah, the, the, the film and cameras and shit, bad guys were well, taking his camera and <laughs> take the film out. Right, right. Shit like that. Like, stuff like that. Like, yeah. now everything's, like, all digital and stuff. Exactly. He just sets up, like, a little spider pod somewhere, and it's yeah. just, like, snapping photos. And snapping them. selfies. Right. And I was like, yeah, that, that, know, that's, that's the days right um, now. Not only that, uh, I like his costume. I like the fact that uh, they've uh, kind of melded some of the stuff that they've been doing in the comic books with that, where he has tech inside of the costume, which is cool. Uh, it's actually... It brings a new perspective to actually watching it and seeing that because uh, instead of him designing it, it's more of Stark designed that right, suit, right, yeah, which is I cool saw. because he's, he designed the Iron Spider suit, which was really, really dope suit. Uh, I have the not seen the Homecoming yet. The Spider you have Man not watched I it? have not seen Spider-Man Spider Spider Homecoming yet. Blasphemy. Uh, I just now watched that bullshit uh, X-Men Apocalypse. I just watched that last weekend. Um, That movie... Failed on a few things. Every? A few things. Every level? Yeah, like... I uh, fell asleep and I had to... Storyline pacing was, was a problem in that movie. And then um, action sequences were completely dumbed down in that movie. Yeah, um, it was... They, yeah. were, they were cool looking, but they were short as fuck. Like, what did we see? Like, maybe Archangel on the screen, like, maybe like three or four minutes during that whole action sequence. Like, come on, man. They just called him Angel. <laughs> yeah, he, had, he had the metal wings at that point. Yeah. He's Archangel because yeah. he became a horseman. So yeah, Angel of Death, man. But the, uh, yeah, that like there was so much more they could have did with that, which is why I'm actually happy that uh, Disney bought out Fox and got you know the rights to those characters right. again. But we really won't see any real changes in between all that until all of their movies have come out and 
then Marvel decides how they're going to melt that all together. I have no idea mm -hmm. how they're going to explain how a bunch of mutants have been existing on Earth during the entire time that only the Inhumans and Enhanced people like, you know, Captain America, Iron Man, all right. of them have been running around, and S.H.I.E.L.D. had no idea about them. Like, there's going to be some serious writing that's going to have to go into that on, and to make that believable. Uh, I, I have no idea how that's going to work. And that... Like I said, is why this man is on right here because he knows a shitload more about the comic book movies and shit than I do. Uh, so, in general, go and check out Black Panther. That's Great an A plus movie. movie. That is an A plus. Did you see it in movie. IMAX? Uh, I know. I, I watched it. Uh, I wish I would have watched it in IMAX. That's not an IMAX. I watched it. Um, we went down to Alatuki. I took my parents. I took my uh, brother and his wife. Uh, and I took my son, and you know I was wearing my Black Panther T-shirt. My brother was in his daishiki. My mom was in her daishiki. <laughs> my dad was in his Black Panther shirt. My son was in his Black Panther shirt. We were ready, man. It was fun. Yeah. You like you said, you didn't expect uh, it to get that big or bigger than Justice League. I, no, uh, I, I had a feeling that, uh, like I heard uh, on some other station uh, radio shows or whatever, that uh, the comic book geeks. Were gonna come out, and then with this movie, it was gonna bring out the flood of like black people who not even seen any other Marvel uh, movie. It was I gonna it. come out like like uh, Obama supporters. Yeah, it was I gonna come. It. Well, that was gonna come out. Well, the whole thing was is that you know like it was a movie that was about Africans. Yeah. Movie about Africans. So of course they wanted to it, check that out. Not only that, it was a black director. It was black actors, you know, black producer, yep. like like you know, uh, Stan Lee was super behind all of it and everything. Yep. Like and there he, was he really definitely made his appearance like he usually that does. That was hilarious. That was funny. Way. That was hilarious. That was funny. Um, also, the the character that stood out the most with a lot of people was uh, was Killmonger, Eric Killmonger, Michael B. Jordan. You did work with that character uh, like, that as a villain that was one probably one of the best villains we've seen and only because he came off as so real um uh, what happened to him you know in that storyline is exactly why i could see he would turn out that way and why he would view the world in the way that he views the world and to tell you the truth you know he's not entirely wrong you know like um you know wanting to to for his people to be able to rise up because nobody else would actually reach up and help him. He went through all those links to go over there and try to take over Wakanda so that he can send all those weapons to all those other peoples so they can finally rise up. Now, I'm not saying that that was, uh, like, right, in a sense, because that's yeah. a more of a Malcolm X approach. Yeah. You know, but... I'm going to say that I understand his mentality about why he was trying to do that. And his closing statement at the end, you know... Really, about you know, uh, you know when he, he was like, he's like, we can throw we, me in the uh, we ocean can heal like, you, yeah, like throw me in the ocean with yeah. my, you know, my ancestors, yep, yeah. uh, you know, because you know, you know, death is always better than bondage, you know, and I'm just like, damn, that's really fucking deep. Like, to tell you the truth, I ain't trying to go to prison, you know. Uh, dude, that's that's I'd rather true. die to go to than go to prison. Why? Because I don't want to be locked up in a hole, somebody. That's why I don't yeah. break the law either. But still, you know, I understand it. Yeah, but I'm just going to say this last thing. I wasn't too impressed with his acting with that character. The acting with that character, I I just wasn't on point with it. I thought he was dope. I liked the movie in general. He was um, supposed to be over the top, like, hood as shit and, like, like you know, mean as fuck. He came off as mean as fuck. Like even in the museum scene, like like when she started talking. Oh, he was to him, yeah. He definitely like, was uh, heartless. You yeah, he was definitely heartless. Felt that heartless, but but I mean, when I, you, I just when you walk in on your your murdered father in the living room of your apartment, you know, and you see who did it and left, mm -hmm. and you already know the stories of where you ca your your father came from and everything. You you gotta imagine that there's gonna be a lot of hatred in that dude's heart, man. Like, and for him to, to act it out in that way, I think it was pretty genuine. Because most niggas would be like that anyway. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Alright. So, go see Black Panther. Yes. Good movie. Uh, definitely a good movie. 
Alright, so uh, this is A Mad Week with George I. Courtright, special guest. Aaron Atkins. And we're going to continue on with the stories from this week. Oh, um, let's jump over to some, uh, some follow-up news uh, with the... Uh, fuck, I keep forgetting the, the Florida shooting. Oh, man. The Florida shooting. That's um, an entire fucking mess, dude. That, that is um, probably one of the worst things, like, ever. Like, these shootings are getting out of hand. They are getting and, out of hand. And, uh, it, it's hard to not understand how these kids feel. Like, it really is hard to not understand how these kids feel. Like, like, I don't know about you, but I've been shot at before, okay? Oh, no, no, I've yeah. never been shot at before. I've been shot at before, Never and it been sucks, shot at before. Because you think you're going to die. Like, oh, you yeah. literally think you're going to, like, this is it. Doesn't matter how fast you run it or anything, because keep in mind, it's a bullet. the bullets run way faster than you can. Yes. Okay, so you think that you're going to die, okay? And then you live after yeah. a bunch of your friends get killed, and then... Basically, the entire nation, other than people that actually sympathize with your situation, just treat you like shit. Like, like because your opinion doesn't matter because you got shot at and you don't know shit about guns that you are either like faking it or either like your your like your words don't mean anything. Let me tell you something. For somebody to be able to survive a situation like that. Uh, oh, they're that, gonna have like PTSD. It's, it's that's definitely gonna... extremely damaging. Yeah, extremely damaging uh, to the psyche. And they're at an age where you know they're very impressionable. Oh yeah, yeah. You know that and is that young, burned into their, their brain you know, now. Yep, yeah, uh, burned just into their be, brain. Uh, scared to go anywhere and shit like that. Not necessarily yeah. scared to go anywhere, but they're they're gonna have serious trust issues when you talk to them about. Um, Guns, uh, in general, especially something along the lines of uh, what the kid used, which was an AR-15. AR-15, he brought um, in, like, uh, smoke grenades. He even had a gas mask himself. Uh, he had multiple clips. Um, like, this, this kid dude, was trained. He was trained, well, which was kind of weird. Pre, I don't know if he was trained, trained, but he definitely... He got charged with premeditation. Uh, well, yeah, the, so and you well, can definitely tell that. Well, from what from what we're we're hearing, I don't know if it's exactly true. Don't crucify me over this, people, please. But apparently, he was trained by somebody that was part of a white supremacist group. Oh shit! All right, like wow. he was trained, like so. And not only that, I didn't know that part. I did some research. I didn't know that part. He had already like said that this is something that he had wanted to do before. He had already been reported to the cops. He had already yep. been reported to the FBI, all of that. Uh, and through all of that preparation, through all of those people knowing the type of person he was, this guy was still able at you know, 18, 19 years old, whatever the fuck 19. he is, 19. Punk ass 19 year To old. be able to walk into a store, buy a rifle, and oh, use said rifle to go and murder a bunch of kids... In a school. Yes. And uh, the first thing that these assholes want to do, and I'm looking right at you when I'm saying uh, this, these assholes want to do is defend the weapons as like a reflex action because everybody's looking to take your guns. Listen, motherfuckers, nobody's looking to take your guns completely away. What we people just need want, some kind of fucking uh, control or yeah. some kind of... Uh, more research into people getting these guns and all yes. that stuff. But then again, a lot of these people who have been getting these guns, doing these shootings and stuff, some they, of them they, do it they, illegally. They're, 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 yeah. yeah, some people yeah. have them illegally. Oh, of course. Some people have you know no records or background shit. Uh, if they would have checked this dude's social media, they would have been like, I don't know about this motherfucker. Uh, <sighs> but uh, some of these people can still get. Like, like you wouldn't know that they are the ones that's gonna snap because nothing's ha has happened before in the past. You mean to tell me that there's no psyche valve for buying like you know something like that, like anything like that? Like at this point, at this stage in the game, like we all know this kid bought the gun legally. There's 17 people dead. Right. And all 15, the avenues. 15 that, others injured. 15 others injured. All of the avenues that were said 
that needed to be made for something like this not happening were done. Except for the one that you guys keep fighting, which is stricter gun control laws. You know? I mean, at some point, like, some of that's got to give a little bit. Because, I mean, like, I don't want to go and find out that it was my kid that got splashed up oh, like that. Absolutely. I know you guys don't want to go and find out it was your kids that got splashed up at school, you know, over all that stuff. And then I hear these weak-ass sucking, you know, remarks like, like, well, what about the gun violence in Detroit? What about the gun violence in Chicago? Let me tell you oh, something. Wow. Okay. Like, how many of those niggas that you guys hear about shooting each other in Chicago are walking into your fucking high schools and blasting 17 children away? None. No. But I haven't heard uh, the comparison with the school violence to the streets of Detroit or Chicago. That's a weak uh, ass I just, fucking defense. I just know it, uh, it's, just, it's just a tragedy. It's bullshit. Yeah. Uh, some of the things that I did that did come up on my research uh, to do the follow up. Uh, the like you were saying, the sheriff office received a call in November saying that Cruz could be a school shooter. So people ha could tell that this motherfucker was had the capability of doing something. And I, a lot of people have had that sense that hey, this motherfucker ain't right. But yeah. there's this motherfucker was so not right that somebody actually reported it in, which you don't usually hear about. Right. The motherfucker reported it in. And then uh, prior to somebody reporting them that, hey, this dude might be a school shooter, his own relative called in saying, hey, you might want to seize these this motherfucker's guns. A relative called the fucking same sheriff's office saying you might want to uh, seize the dude's guns. So there was a lot of bullshit on the uh, sheriff's office part and this motherfucking campus cop because people were like, hey, uh, each school should have a cop, an armed cop on hand. Well, this one did have an armed cop on hand. Uh, he heard the shooting. He went over to the building where he heard the shooting and he waited outside four minutes and never entered. This motherfucker's a punk ass and not wow. doing his job. Uh, he... He was suspended uh, without pay uh, after that, and he just uh, resigned and retired. That's bitch made. That is bitch made. Ain't worthy of. You're not of, worthy of, of the you're title. Not worthy of not the badge. You're shit. not worthy of exactly. You're not even worthy of carrying that gun that you were supposed to protect people with. You know, I always hear that you know guns are not designed to kill people; they're designed to protect people. Shut the fuck up, okay? Like a gun is a bullet is designed to kill or destroy Whatever. anything that it hits. Yep. Okay. It's not designed to protect shit. Like a taser protects you, which is less lethal than any bullet that's ever been made. Okay. Is there a chance that you can be killed with the fucking taser? Sure, but not likely. They're uh. used way too often. To try to justify something like that. Okay, but now, here's the question. What is the solution? Because you can't just say, all right, nobody gets a gun. Nobody can have a rifle. Nobody right. can have this. Because if you take away from all the law-abiding citizens, all the people of right mind, uh, that means all the criminals and just the government is going to have the uh, weapons. Well, and you don't want that shit to happen. The reason that the... Uh, Bill of Rights or whatever, put that in so that the government doesn't have all the c control, and if there was ever need for a uh, revolt, the people would be able to have arms as well. So you know how I was mentioning how, you know, they investigated this kid already, and like, they, you know, they sent like the FBI go over and talk to him, or whatever whatever law enforcement they sent over there and all that? Right. There should have been follow-up on that, where somebody should have been watching him, like, like, without his knowledge. Just like when he was leaving the home, stuff like that. I know it sounds like it's an invasion of privacy, but when you have like reportings of shit like that that could potentially happen, and you know this kid is unstable, he's been in uh, numerous problems at school, uh, he's had issues with people, like all that other stuff. Yeah, yeah. Maybe, just, just yeah. You know, maybe like, he should right, be checked out because maybe. he did get expelled for uh, picking a fight with somebody. He got expelled. Uh, his mom died. He got these calls. Uh, take his guns away. Uh, this motherfucker ain't right. Somebody. All right. 
One, yeah. Let's yeah. let's hold on to these guns. There's let's a, see what fucking happens. There's also another thing too, like like because you know like like you know I know a lot. Of, Donald Trump caught a lot of heat saying what he said on Twitter. There is a little bit uh, of truth to that. Which one was that? What? When he was talking about you know like you know, you know it's on some of these people that didn't that that treated this kid wrong and like a bunch of other stuff. Here's the thing. Don't like, give me that shit. Here's Don't the give thing. me that fucking shit. I'm not even shit. gonna go there. There's, there's, <laughs> Don't even give like, me that he's shit. He's four percent right, and here's the thing: because there's always gonna be personal responsibility. Yep. Okay. Yes. If I go out there and I fuck with somebody in the street, I have to expect that they're a either gonna talk shit back to me, or b knock me the fuck out, or c I could possibly be killed for fucking with an unstable person. That is okay? true. Okay, you don't know who these people are, and the problem with these kids today is that nobody's teaching them real compassion for each other. Like, they go out and they talk to each other and treat each other like absolute fucking shit. There's almost a detachment mm -hmm. of humanism between these kids because there's so much social media to where they can literally, like, be sitting in the same room with each other and they could be talking about said kid right here and just messaging yeah. shit and they're just sitting up here snickering and laughing and pointing at the kid. You know, that is still a form of bullying. So... We need to we need to do something about not only you know gun control. We need to do something about psyche valves. We need to do something about you know handling like our own children and making sure they're not going to school and mistreating each other. Like whatever happened to like people actually being like learning how to be nice to one another. No, like, I it understand seems that. like that's I not taught anymore. I definitely Everybody's understand just... people uh, being nice to one each other, uh, one another. But we also have to. Uh, and still having tough skin. Like, just because somebody True. says something doesn't mean you have to react. Because when you said uh, about Trump, I, I totally just, like, come the fuck on. This motherfucker is going to say that. Oh, All right, yeah. So, so therefore, that dude is so always if, flying if, off if, the handle. Yeah, you flying off the handle. So if you're saying what's right, so if one of these shithole countries decide to do something, they, they're in the... That that's that's our fault. Why did you say? I, why do you think I said four percent? Hey, all right, I'm like, just. <laughs> I said four, and that's a, like like that. That's a, like right at the line, son. Like yeah. like like. There's a little bit of truth to that. Like so little that that at this point we gotta acknowledge everything. Okay, like like by not acknowledging everything, we're only leaving more avenues open. For this stuff to just oh, yeah. continue just, just happening, putting only happening. Bl blame on one spot. Yeah, right. I understand that. And in greater frequency too, because keep in mind, you know, it still comes down to the kid bought the fucking gun legally. He still went in there and blasted a bunch of kids, and they're not here no more. Right. You know, those parents are now without their children. Yep. And those kids that survived are either have to live with PTSD from being shot at all fucking stupid. And don't give me the tough skin shit about that because that shit sucks, okay? Um, and, it sucks, you know, losing your friends, man. Come on, man. You lose your friends in a way like that. Like, people lose friends every day, okay? I lost my friend to suicide last year. Ugh. You know, that sucks. You know, Ugh. and he, yeah. ha he had uh, psychiatric uh, issues and stuff, you know, and ongoing psychiatric issues. And, you know... It was a gun that he used on himself, you know? Right. And um, if he would have been being looked at in the way that we want these people to be looked at when they're buying these guns, <laughs> that may have been somewhat preventable. Somewhat. But, uh, but Trump, Trump just allowed uh, people with mental issues being able to get guns now. Uh, he repealed the uh, Obama... Uh, Law Any, or rule. That's thing. why I say, like, anything Obama he's going to repeal. Yep. Because he just wants to undo everything Obama did. Because he just hates the guy. That's a, I mean, that's all there is to it. Like, like he has... Obama got so far under that, underneath that dude's skin that he just hates <laughs> And it all started uh, with him talking shit. Exactly. Saying Obama was not an American. Exactly. Like, and Obama was, had the better jabs. So you yeah. gonna jab somebody? Didn't realize he had better jab jabs, and now well, you all pissed off. He did. He did uh, talk some shit. It was like you know, I've been president. You'll never be president. Oh, oh, yeah, oh you know. Yeah, sure. And now look what we're looking at. We're looking at a Cheeto and all oh, shit. But uh, don't, don't even you know, start. Ugh. Yeah, that's a that's a See, fucking mess. I, I like and, purposely. And these motherfuckers are mad now because he just banned uh, bump stocks. Oh, did it? Is it actually in? Enforced, dude. That's an executive order. Okay, that, that's it. 
That's crazy. I ain't gonna hate that. Like I wasn't I wasn't gonna like like I haven't said anything about it and everything, but that's still just a drop in the water of like what everybody's talking about. Yeah, but you it's know. a start. It's a start. Not necessarily. Like it, like it's a it's start. It's a start. It's a start. It, it, all it is is them sticking their toe in the water and see, you know, just how cold it's gonna get. Hey, but now you know, you know how fucking you, that's it's still a start. That it first comes the toe. Like I'm gonna <laughs> tell you this then right the now. Foot. Ankle, because right now we really don't know what to do. So starting somewhere will work. And this may sound like me supporting Trump, which I, you know me, fuck Trump. Yeah. But we got to start somewhere because I don't have an answer. I don't know what to do. But yes, if that is legal to turn a fucking, well, get the equipment to turn a fucking AR-15 into a fucking automatic weapon... Uh, uh, to to basically mimic automatic behaviors. Oh uh, my! Well, I don't yeah. know that shit. So, so thank mimic, you for to mimic automatic behavior. It just to allows the, the rounds to come out faster by modifying where the the the, uh, the stock itself is propelling the gun forward while you're actually holding down the trigger, so it's still blasting off rounds. But this motherfucker knows some shit. Uh, no, 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 no. I, no, I, I have friends with guns. You have no, you have no more than me. I'm not a gun expert. Okay? You know more than me, and yeah. probably a lot of you guys. But to, but to 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 classify an AR-15 as just nothing but a hunting rifle? Oh hell, hell no. no! No. Oh hell no! Yeah. As a matter of fact, uh, as soon as possible, I'm going to go say, get me one. I would because say because they might take those off. It's not an assault rifle, so a lot of people are saying. Wait a minute, that. What's the AR stand for? AR. I get it. I get it. <laughs> But it's not it's not necessarily an assault rifle because an assault rifle that they use military style uh-huh. is uh, comes with uh, with selection where you can either have single fire, burst fire, or automatic. Right, right. Um, it doesn't have that. It's just a, sem- a semi-automatic, you know, right. rifle. Um, which there are several semi-automatic rifles that are out that are not necessarily that don't look like the AR-15, but they can still do as much damage and still have the same fire rates. You know, so there's a lot of that up to, to, to debate. You know, but I guess the closest thing that you excuse me, the closest thing that you can call an AR-15 to would be like a carbine. You know? not, I don't but, know. But other than that, like you know, I don't, know what don't that take is. my word for it because I, I, you know, I, I just know a little bit of this stuff because of my friends have guns. Like that's just not my realm of expertise. You know. Uh, all right. So that's been what three stories. We got several other stories to touch base on. Uh, Break it. Uh, Marshall redshirt freshman, uh, Marshall University, uh, over in West Virginia. Redshirt freshman, defensive tackle Larry Aaron dies at the age of 19 from a straight gunfire at New uh, New Year's Eve party in Maryland. So once Wait. again, once again, here comes guns. Fucking up this dude's fucking life. Uh, he initially, Shit, he, yeah, he initially was paralyzed since the wound, but he died this morning. So this uh, college football player was at a New Year's Eve party. Uh, fight broke out. Guns end up uh, playing a part in it, and a stray bullet ends up hitting this young man, 19 years old, and he goes to the hospital. They pronounced him paralyzed, and that was a pistol, wasn't it? Uh, it didn't say exactly what it was, but most likely it most was likely probably it was a handgun pistol. because yeah. you ain't fighting with, with ARs a or whatever, or but it's still AR guns and shit like, like that. that. Yeah. So more gun violence. What the fuck are we going to do? Obviously, this is in the hands of somebody who couldn't control his fucking temper. A New Year's Eve party, most likely alcohol involved. Yeah. Uh, but unfortunately, this young man... Larry Aaron, uh, defensive tackle at Marshall, died because of more gun violence. Oh, mad week. Stop once shooting again. each other, y'all. Stop shooting each other. Like, like, Stop being fucking if y'all go, assholes. If y'all go fight and everything, like, throw them hands, man. Throw them hands all day. I'm if you're all for real, that. man, you throw them hands. Like, I'm all for it. But we don't need to be out there shooting each other, y'all. Well, we, like, we shouldn't be doing any of this stuff. Any of that but, stuff. But. I always but, thought there should be some kind of like a like a back in the old days they had the duel or whatever. But if two people really can't hash things out by words, they should give them both licenses. If they want to duke it out, have a fucking place. It, like, all right, what's the issue? You know, all right, it, you, here's a license. You can legally fight 
We can post. We can put it on TV. Make money for the, <laughs> make money for charities. Can you or whatever. imagine that having like tough and man then, like UFC like that like MMA bouts and shit? Oh, what? Just like, just like all right, you know if you, you sign this waiver, dude, you might die. Do you, are you sure you want to fight? But what's the issue? Oh, he owes you five hundred dollars. All right. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Huh. If you beat his ass, you are awarded the five hundred dollars or like whatever. Just let him. You can tell me I gotta get a black guy, knock this nigga out, and then I then I get my money. Shit. See a lot right, of people take him to, get mad take about him, that. Take him to I court. just take him to court. All right, but, well, uh, but some people, well, maybe that wasn't the best uh, situation. Well, oh, you, you fucked my girlfriend. Now I'm pissed off. Fuck you. What you gonna do about it? Some shit like that. All right, let's fucking. Get it out of your system. Hey, you know what's funny? Bang. Like, like uh, I believe it's like Oregon or either Washington or something has like a, a specific statute in their law where if a, a, an officer is present, two people can actually duke it out. What? Yeah. You remember that superhero that was running around? Uh, the, you know, that black dude that was wearing the all black costume? I remember that. I, okay. That was in Oregon? Yeah. Like, okay. I remember uh, that. So he, uh, he got into a street fight with a dude and an officer oversaw the street fight and he whooped that dude's ass with no consequences to himself because wow. of that law. You know? Wow. Like, like, shit, man. If we had that here, you know how many times I call the police? I'm like, shit. Like, meet me at this nigga's house right now. Like, it's about to go down. Like, <laughs> and then have him there. Can I have some surveillance, please? Yeah. Fuck surveillance. Dude. I need you to sit there and just ref it. Make sure nobody dies. <laughs> and just let me put like, hands on Okay, people. he's had enough, son. Yeah, He's basically. had enough. That's basically all it is. Like, you let them basically, you know, throw hands. Like, they have to both agree on hands. it. And then they go out there and they, you know, they fight. Cool. That's crazy. That is crazy. But you know what, though? I like that. I like that. The, the fact that you have the option. Because, you know what? Sometimes some of these motherfuckers do say some shit that, And then you know, they think just, there's not going to be any consequence. Yeah. Like, like that's a big problem in, in the world right now is that, you know, you know, a lot of grown-ups and kids walk around saying some of the most ridiculous shit to people with no, no consequence exactly. to themselves because they just have the First Amendment that just basically protects, you know, everything. That's, I get it, the freedom of speech and all that other stuff and everything, you know, and hate speech is part of that and everything. But, you know, I mean, you there has to be an expectation that you know. That there is a chance that you're going to get your fucking ass whooped. You might get your ass whooped. And people don't walk around thinking they're going to get their ass whooped. One, oh, I'm going to sue. Uh, if you touch me, you can't touch me. Or you're and a then, pussy and uh, you pull out a gun on somebody. All right. Yeah, so. Sorry. All right. <laughs> Shit. Uh, next one. Lighten it up for a second. Uh, Russell Wilson, uh, the C Seattle uh, Seahawks quarterback, will be attending Yankee Spring Training on Monday. Uh, oh, he was traded from the Rangers, as you can see here. He's in a Rangers uh, jersey. jersey. Uh, he was traded from the Rangers earlier this month. He played minor league ball for the Rockies in 2010-2011. I didn't know none of this shit. Me but, neither. But he's going to be uh, in spring training for the Yankees. Hell yeah. Go get so, that Bo Jackson money, man. I ain't even mad at you. I doubt I doubt if he's actually going to uh, play for this. Like, even in but, spring training. But the attempt, the attempt to try to get yeah. out there and get that, shit, I'm all yeah. with it. That, that's okay. cool. That's cool. Uh, another story involving sports or sports people. Unfo this Now, like I said, that that story was a little bit right, right on, on the yeah. side. Yeah. We're bringing it back down. Oh, shit. Former 49ers defensive tackle Dana Stubblefield was released from jail after one month on a $500,000 bond. Do you know why? Why? Because he was first arrested in May of 2016 for allegedly raping a disabled woman. Fuck it. Oh, hold up, hold up, hold up. It, and there, there's, there's this motherfucker. Uh, he was hit with five felonies, 250000 bail, uh, and was released back in 2016. Uh, January of 2018, uh, prosecutors prosecutors uncovered evidence uh, they believe proves he used a gun to commit the rape. So they brought him back into jail, and now they just now uh, released him on a half a million dollar uh, bond. Uh, this was in Jan January 19. He got put back in there, uh, and did they kick him released. out of the league? Oh, he, he hasn't been in for a while. This, the motherfucker is 47 right now. Okay. 
Um, um, he's required to wear an electronic monitoring device uh, until his court dates in uh, April. Good. Uh, he denies that all alleg- he denies all allegations. Do they have uh, DNA evidence on them? Uh, they they didn't say they had that type of evidence, but um, first of all, it, um, was, dude, they had they brought to the judge that there was evidence that not only did he commit the crime, but he committed the crime with a gun, and that's why they brought him in. So they got some kind of uh, some kind of evidence, some kind of case for them to do all that. Although he is denying all of the allegations. The fact that there was a gun involved, I'm going to stray apart, away from that part right now for a minute. Yeah, we, we, um, touched, we touched upon guns long What enough the to... fuck, bro? You're rich. Why the fuck you do you see... need to be out there raping women? And, a, a, and how low do you have to be to rape a disabled, disabled woman? woman? Yeah. What the fuck is wrong with you? It's, if... If the story is true, if he is found guilty of these allegations, like, I'm not even about, like, it's fucking crazy. Once again, but there's a lot of uh, like a lot of these powerful men, a lot of rich people are being uh, it's a power trip for them. Yeah, yeah. Like, uh, there's that I forgot. His Harvey Weinstein that. like was real bad about that, and you know the Weinstein brothers. He yeah. was real bad yeah. with that shit. Like he was had like he was making a part of like contracts to where they couldn't even talk about it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like, I was like, you mean to tell me that you would contractually, like, sign somebody up for a movie and you get to diddle their shit? Like, and they can't talk about it after that as long as they got the movie part and you paid them the money? You're a sick son of a bitch. Like, that's how you know that a lot of this stuff is, like, power trip shit. You know, and it's not just happening where the dude just, like, goes animalistic and he's he's already a piece of fucking shit. No, he's a like, piece of shit. Uh, yeah. I think it's Darren Sharper uh, that raped all those women, uh, another ex-NFL star, uh, and he, he's in jail now. What uh, the fuck? I, I don't know why, if, if, if you get so much uh, ass thrown to you You're rich. that you have to go another route because you need some kind of chase, you need to, you need to feel like you're getting away with something... I don't know why these people with money are doing shit like this. Uh, and like I said, this is just allegations. He hasn't been. I mean, if you want to get away with something, buy a hoe. Been proven guilty yet? Like, you're like, d- damn. Buy a hoe and uh, go to man. Go like, just go live go to, in Vegas. Yeah, go to the Bunny Ranch, man. Like, do you something. can live there. Like, like, just like Lamar Odom tried like, to do. <laughs> you know, I mean, I mean, regardless of like self defense and all other stuff, man. Like, like that's fucked up. Like, we're so much bigger and more powerful than most women. Like, that that's not... Like, that's just cruelty, dude. Like, that like there's no... Cruel. You know, like, forcing yourself on somebody is just piece... You're just a piece of shit. That's all you're... you're like, I, I don't even want to talk about that piece of shit no more. You're just a piece of shit, dog. Piece of and shit. And I hope they throw your ass out... If you did it... If you I did I hope it. they throw if your you ass it. underneath the jail. Yeah. And you experience butt rape several oh. times. All right, let's... I don't, don't want to think about no dude but raping but anyways uh <laughs> just we, like we're gonna be going over the time uh for a little bit but i haven't had a guest for a while so i am glad to have guests thank you thank you for being here oh you know i got you dog thank you for being here no, having a good you. time when you hit me conversing. up about the black panther thing i was like what? I mean, he was ready I was he like, was hell ready yeah. he was ready but i knew this was the perfect person to have on the show after the opening week of Black Panther. Man. All right. Uh, the next one. Uh, do you know there's black people playing hockey? Yeah. Yeah. I used to play hockey as a kid, like just there, having fun and all that stuff. There is a decent amount of them, uh, like over 25 or so in the league right now. Yeah. Well, that's what happened when you we start to learn how to ice skate. We're going to take your shit over too. Yeah. Uh, well, <laughs> I'm, just I'm just playing. Here's one of the guys, Devante uh, Smith Pelly. And his name is Devante. His name is Devante. <laughs> Devante Sweet. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, he was taunted with racist remarks uh, at the, well, during the Blackhawks game. He plays for the Washington Capitals, and uh, he was in the penalty box at the Blackhawks uh, in Chicago. Uh, and uh, some fans kept Yet taunting him, uh, saying basketball, 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 pretty much uh, stating that dude, you don't belong playing hockey. You need to be playing basketball because you're black. Uh, these fans That's were found out who ridiculous. they were. Uh, the stadium found out who these fans were and kicked them out. 
Good. But it's just bullshit that still in these fucking days that people are just so insistent, so fucking stupid when it comes to fucking race. When will people just realize that we just all people, man? It don't fucking matter what color you are, man. Yeah, like Why the fuck can't we just live? The only thing really different is just color of skin and cultural differences, really. Um, you know, I understand that there are several, like, cultures out there that, are, that lean super extreme into areas that we don't want to visit. Right. But this is not the case. This is just a brother out there just trying to, like, skate just on the ice play. and play some fucking hockey, man. Ch- like, I enjoyed playing some hockey with my friends and stuff when I was a kid. Like, and you mean to tell me that I wouldn't have been able to play hockey because white people wouldn't have liked it? Like, I would have been like, wow, that's kind of fucking no, it's, stupid. It's bullshit. He's out there entertaining your ass. Trying to entertain, trying to put a smile on your fucking face, and you gotta go and just belittle him, all the while well, belittling every other person that's the same color as him. Well, How he, fucking stupid is that? He was on the opposite team, so they're just trying to go as low as they possibly can. Right. And Dude. that's as low as you possibly can when you're talking well, shit on the other team. You, you can uh, like do race you're... or sexual orientation type slurs. Yeah, like that's and, fucking. That, that, Dude, all right, what? But this is just a fucking game. You don't need to go that goddamn low. Hell this no. is just a fucking game, man. Yeah. It's just a game. All like, right. anybody calls oh. me anything crazy on the, on the court, they better have real good reason for that shit. <laughs> uh, well, did you hear about Laura Ingram, uh, Fox News host? Who? Uh, because this, when I was doing research for this... Oh, uh, when she told him to shut up and dribble? Uh, talking about LeBron James saying, hey, shut up and dribble. Uh, some people are still on the fence whether she was trying to be racist or not. It did she, her intent might not have been uh, racist. It did come off uh, as racist. Uh, when I say the intent might not have been racist, because she did put out a book, two thousand three, uh, called "Shut Up and Sing," and since then she's been telling people that she don't like to shut up and do whatever. So that's her little thing. Shut up and. Yeah, some food or some like shit. like that's what? like like when when you're just trying to put somebody into a box like that, um, and you discredit their opinions only based on the fact that they're a professional athlete or an yeah. entertainer of some and sort. That's that's a whole another issue, uh, not just you, race. You are stripping away from them the the fact that they are actually a person with the, with opinions right. and a person you know that is not just existing for your enjoyment, you know. Off the court, that man is going to have his own sensibilities about, you know, how he thinks life should be, you know, and his own opinions about things. And to to say stuff like that to, to someone like that is just uh, really insensitive and kind of sad. And it brings you down uh, to a level that, that brings you to ex- almost exactly where real racists are at. You know, where just the ignorance they, and just, yeah, you're just thinking you're that just you're an better than a person. Like, like you don't value who he is as a person anyway, uh, beyond him dribbling a basketball. Yeah, you know? especially when it comes to like politics and religion and shit like that. A lot of the stuff is just opinion and shit. Yeah, and you're pretty much saying because. Uh, what you do for a living is basketball. What I do for a living is uh, talk uh, on the TV about uh, stuff that I've researched. I'm better than you. You need to do what you do. This is what I do. I can talk about politics because that's my job. Your job is dribbling. Uh, sh- uh, it's fucking well, silly. Well, with, with her, it's all opinionated stuff. So, like, even then, like... It's Fox News. Like, it's Fox <laughs> News. Like, even if it was CNN and stuff, you yeah. know, that's a... It's it's a news that that leans in a direction. Right. So they're going to always have their agendas. And what it is is that he doesn't agree with their agenda. Right. Oh, so definitely. Fox has been very, very... They've been known to, to basically talk down on people like that who yeah. don't follow their agenda. So it, for me, it's not all that surprising. What I do like... Uh, is the fact that he's like, no, I'm not going to just shut up and dribble. I have some shit to say, and either you can listen to it or you can get the fuck on. So that's, that's, I, more props to you, LeBron, for that shit, because, uh, hell yeah. Fuck that bitch. Fuck that tree. All right. Next, we got. All day. Uh, guess what? What? It has been confirmed that there will be another Rush Hour movie. Rush Hour 4. Rush Hour 3 was not shit, but 1 and 2 
were the shit. They were the tight. Absolute, honestly, I sat I sat down and thought, like, I fucking love one. I love two. I can't even fucking remember what three was about. I can't no, even remember three. Three was literally forgettable. But, yeah. But, uh, <laughs> I forgot what the fuck happened. Like, it was a bunch of bullshit. I, I can't even remember anymore. Like, I, I know it was uh, set in China on that one, too. But, um, and uh, I guess in, uh, it was also, part of it was in Paris, some of it was in China. I know you had that, that fine-ass chick that was in that movie. I can't remember her name. And then he had that was one. Was that uh, the one where they was on stage? Uh, did that little gun? Uh, she got out of the car that was like a. Oh, that. All right. I do remember some parts of that fucking movie. All right. Well, I am ready for another Rush Hour movie. Yeah, that's going to be pretty tight. It'll be actually pretty cool to see Chris Tucker get back on fucking camera, dude. Jesus Christ. Yeah. We've only been asking you to do fucking Friday for so long, but. Hey, Jackie Chan wants to make another movie. Let's go ahead and do it. But, it's you know, nice. Ice Cube wants to do something with you. You're like, nah. <laughs> I don't know what's going on with that, but uh, I, that's kind of whack, man. Maybe it's the we, money we, issue. Maybe, like, you know they handed them some dollars. Uh, well, know? It, but, I mean, in reality, dude, like, you haven't been all that big since, like, you know. Rush Hour like, 3. Yeah, Rush <laughs> Hour 3, dude. Like, like. You know, I know he's been doing a lot of stand up and everything. Uh, yeah, he's been touring, doing stand up. Yeah. I thought about going, but then again, that last Netflix uh, stand up comedy that he did wasn't the greatest. Really? It wasn't the greatest. Go check it out. There was a, a spot where he's talking about Michael Jackson that's pretty fucking funny, but the rest of it, once again, forgettable. Oh, okay. It's been well. 10 years since the last Rush Hour, so I am ready for Rush Hour 4. Hell yeah. Uh, one of the biggest things, uh, that fucks me up, uh, is that Tony Braxton and Birdman are officially engaged, which is, that so, is so fucking weird. Back in the day, Tony Braxton was just, just the sweetest little fucking thing to me, and I fucking hated cash money. So now, they are fucking engaged, man. It's official. Uh. Man, you mean this ugly nigga can get a... This, uh... Well, he get a chick as fine as Tony Braxton. I'm fine as Tony fine. Braxton. She fifty. She fifty now. So she just looking for something. Uh, and he is forty nine. But he uh, was oh, like okay. one of the founders of Cash Money. And I fucking hated Cash Money growing up. I fucking didn't like that until they did have like two songs that I like, and that was the Still Fly, Gator Booze, and all that shit. Yeah, yeah. And then the Oh yeah, that song. I like those two, but the rest of that shit. The whole fucking label can kiss my ass. Yeah, you didn't like Juvenile at all? No. Didn't a lot like of people Ju- didn't. No. I didn't but, like Juvenile. I didn't like early Wayne. I didn't like uh, Wayne until what? Can we call Carter him like the, the original mumble rapper? <laughs> Which one? Uh, juvenile. Juvenile. I, uh, uh, what, the back that ass up? Oh, I, man. I, I did not like that. I yeah, didn't that like was, that That's shit. a good fucking party song, though. I didn't, that's a good party I didn't song. like it. Like, uh, every single time I've ever seen that song go on in the club, I just be like... All right, yeah. All right, yeah. I sit there and like, uh-oh, this song. Let's, 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 let's see what's going on. If you're a smart uh, man, you I get got, out there and that I dance floor. I'm going to be like, it. oh, this is my jam. Shit, no. I'll get on the dance floor. Fuck with that shit. I'll watch. No, I'll just wait and then like, oh, hey, little mama. I saw you backing that thing up. That's how we got missed opportunity. Shit. Man. Nope, because they out there with their girls. They just trying to have a good time. And oh, then I say, true. and then I say, I noticed you. I noticed you. That's what I say. Tony Braxton, I noticed you. But Tony Braxton is off the market. But guess who is back on the market? Who? Tisha Campbell. Tisha Damn. Campbell and uh, husband Dwayne Martin. Uh, are getting a divorce. Tisha Campbell has filed for divorce from husband of 22 years. They were together 27 years, have two sons, a.k.a. Gina Payne. G- Damn, Gina! Jeez. So they are at a super crush on oh my, I've been like, I'm talking like house party. House party. House dude. party. That like, was my girl, house party. Right? That was my girl on house party. She was fine. So fine. I, I've been a fan, and she back on the market. Well, hey... Tisha, I don't know if you, if you heard the news. I don't know that might have been why you did it, but you know I'm back there too. So uh, holla at me, girl. Holla at me, Gina. Oh, uh, let's see. Oh, I didn't skip nothing. Oh, yeah, I did skip something. Young Thug changes his name. You know, who Young Thug is unfortunately one of, the, yeah. one of these fucking punk ass rappers. He's changing his name to Sex. Not 
Not Lil Sex, not Sex Thug, just straight up S E X. Is this the same fool that like goes around with like Louis Vuitton purses and purses, like, dresses, dresses and, shit like uh, that? and all this shit? Yeah. Just a motherfucker just trying to get attention any way he can. Hey, I'm gonna call myself sex. Stupid ass shit, but this that's these these days it's all about attention. How many likes you get? Oh, uh, let me get uh, more followers on IG so somebody will advertise on my IG and all this shit. It's all about uh, being famous and getting attention and shit. That's so goofy. It's like these people, man. Like like these uh, people. There's you know for me, it, like I don't know if we touched on this before, but I've seen a lot of uh, drop in masculinity in our, our uh, young men. Um, well, yeah, but, I think a lot of this has to do with it. Uh, do you, that and like uh, you know, uh, the single parent stuff and like all other stuff. Like they're not really learning anything anymore. Like, like you know, I, I had my son, you know, pulling apart cars when he was five years old and everything. You know, it's not something we do like like all the time and everything. But like, it just introducing them to you know that type of car culture and like computers and stuff like that you know yard work like make him go out there and pick up shit in his sister's in my uh his aunt's yard my sister's yard you know stuff like that well whereas I, these kids it's just you know their phone you know you know some is that, is that, it's, it's just it's it's culture and it's the times they are changing type shit because i've never been a car type person i don't like to get my fucking hands dirty i will get my hands dirty shit i play fucking football you know but i just don't like to get my hands dirty there's different levels of masculinity and then when you talk about the uh the dress the fashion and shit think about uh the 80s think about some of the early rappers and shit the grandmaster flashes and shit yeah that's this what well, how they're dressing now is how they dressed back then like the migos coming out like sequins and shit they did that in like the uh grandmaster flash days plus the think about the hair bands uh, oh, <laughs> yeah. those motherfuckers was wearing what, what shit prince yeah. what think about prince motherfucker Known for wearing blouses and high heels. Yeah. But yet, yeah. he get the bitches. <laughs> Yo, explain that to me. I, I can't, man. Explain that to me. I cannot. And purple. <laughs> well, I, hey, I like purple. I don't mind purple. Hey, Purple's but, cool. Hey, but is purple considered a masculine color or feminine color? It depends. No, no, no. No, the only reason because you can say, you. hey, what about Prince? That's all you got. No, no, no. That's all you say, got. It depends on the shade. <laughs> Oh. I said, that's his fault. No, it don't. Yes, it do. Yes, Man. it do. Yes, it do. If you come at me with some like lavender, some yeah, like, what like is no, that? no, <laughs> like I'm not like like you come at me with some lavender and shit. I'm like, dog, I'm not putting that on. Like, what's wrong with you? Man, like, but if you come at me purple. like with a, a just a dark a purple, purple shirt, a dark, bold, uh, purple fruit of maloon, uh, great, uh, <laughs> purple shit. That's 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 real man shit right there. I don't want to no. say like real man shit, but it, it's it's no. it's masculine enough to wear it. Hey dog, let me get that uh that purple shirt right there. You no, know, <laughs> you'll never see me in pink though, and I see a lot of people. I don't give. A, I wear pink. I wear whatever the fuck I want. True. Because I am true to who the fuck I am. I ain't worried about being called uh, emasculate, uh, gay or whatever. I don't fucking care. I'm gonna do what the fuck I do. Yeah, I don't give a shit that they're doing this stuff and everything. I just I'm just noticing it. Yes. Yeah, I'm just noticing it. So him making himself into an outlandish name like Sex, you know, I mean, you know, Prince turned his name into a fucking symbol. That was contract reasons, though. That is true. That, you know, so this asshole know. just just doing it he to just, do it. Yeah, he's just doing it. Be stupid. Yeah. But uh, earlier we talked about uh, pussy ass cowards like the, uh, the dude who did not go in to stop the shooting and shit. Yeah. Uh, now we're going to talk about somebody who really didn't have to do the shit that he did. But guess what? Why not help a fellow person? Snoop helps a stranded driver. Uh, before the All-Star game on Sunday, uh, this lady was in traffic. Her car had collapsed on her. Uh, Snoop Dogg saw and whatnot. She was, she was in her fucking car, uh, called her brother, was waiting for her brother to come. Rap, rap, rap on the window. It was Snoop. He said, <laughs> hey, I'll help you. Uh, I'm going to push this car out of the way because I don't think it's safe for you. He goes and parks his fucking car on the like exit ramp, walks back, and pushes her fucking car out of the way. And this is 
All Star Game Day before that shit. Uh, over in Riverside, California. Like, people need to understand that Snoop, Snoop Dogg is a different type of human being. Like, that dude has probably seen so much, like, hatred and violence and bullshit in his lifetime that he has, uh, uh, you know, a, a bug for compassion in his system, man. Like, like it's it's almost like it's built in. You see it, too, like, when he's coaching kids for football oh, yeah, and all yeah, other it, stuff. It, yes. Like, he... He really means it. It's not just like publicity stunts and everything. That's He's been with the yeah. same wife and everything. He has yep. his family. Like, that dude is a pretty genuine, like, cool dude. And I know he sits around, he smokes weed and shit all day. Well, the fuck but not? he don't harm nobody. No. He don't go out there starting no real shit and everything. He did kind of call, uh, you know, Conor McGregor out after the fucking fight did and it? everything. Oh, yeah. He was like, he was what? during the fight and everything, at the end, he was like, you punk ass bitch. That's right, blah, 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 blah. A lot of people didn't what? like that shit. I, I didn't but, know about that. But, you know, it, I mean, I'm going to take that one little piece of negative and be like, be like, look, as a person, as a whole, that's a pretty nice person out there, dude. And I know a lot of those fighters were pretty pissed about that. And I saw Matt Brown uh, talking a lot of shit on, um, on uh, Joe Rogan's podcast about that, you know, and uh, calling Snoop a piece of trash and everything. You don't know nothing about that, dude. Um, he's done a lot of shit for the community and a lot of stuff that you haven't even done for those type of communities and stuff. Um, and for him to have one moment where, you know, he's out there and he's talking some shit, motherfucker, these dudes are out here doing worse stuff like oh, raping bitches doing shit, and yeah. fucking doing all yeah, that stuff. Doing, you get mad yeah, at a dude talking bullshit. shit about a dude out there fighting and stuff, you know, and everything and like, that's going to happen. That's just fans out there, you know, talking the shit that they talk. As far as the type of person he is, like I don't think any of that is weighed on it, and I and acts like this prove it, you know, like like he's actually a good person. Yeah, that's, uh, that's didn't, pretty. Didn't that's pretty need dumb. to do that shit. Dope. He easily could have called somebody. Yeah. He could have just just ignored it, just like like most of most do, at, just well, try, hundreds of thousands of people. This California, hundreds of thousands of people probably passed her. A fucking star, fucking uh, rich guy. Stop decide to take helps. his time, which he, obviously he had plans that day. He didn't know how long this was gonna take. He took his time to fucking help this lady. Right. So that's cool of you, Snoop Dogg. Oh yeah, uh, cool for that, man. Last story uh, is gonna be. I know I keep talking about Wendy Williams, punk ass, but um, she decides that she wants to talk more shit. Uh, she says you know, about. We talked about Fergie shit at the beginning. She says, oh, Fergie needs auto-tune. <laughs> like, first, uh, Wendy Williams, who the fuck are you? You ain't no American Idol judge. Right. Who the fuck are you to say this? But then, and, all right, Fergie fucked up. We've heard Fergie before. Fergie fucked up. Yeah, you know, like, like everybody gets one, like, on that. But uh, it, it just sucks that it was during the national anthem. During the national Like, yep. usually when you want to, like, fuck up, let it be on, like, your own material and shit. But, like, fucking up the national anthem by trying to be super creative and stuff like that, you want to be kind of careful with that because you're going to get clowned. As far as what Wendy Williams has to say about, like, her, her singing voice and all of that and everything, like, bitch, you sound like the back of a truck. And had a like potato a on the exhaust, like like I ain't get falling for the, the banana in the tailpipe here, like like for real. Like there was some shit on Instagram I saw this earlier. Like like uh like uh I'm on my 37th week of uh, not having sex. Wendy Wendy Williams is starting to look like a snack. I was like hell no, oh. nigga. Like I would literally beat the skin off my dick before I would touch that. She looks like a man. Oh, with, with God. fake tits. Like, she looks like a man. She looks like she got a sex change at the same time as uh, home homeboy who's now homegirl. Jenner. Uh, yeah, Jenner. Ugh. Yeah, like like that's uh, like, and I know that sounds fucked up, but like, like you you don't look good, lady. You you really don't. Well. Of course, she doesn't just hold her tongue for shit. She and she's probably one of the of other people not. that uh, says shit probably just to get, get a uh, rise out of people. Rise out of people. So she says, Fergie needs auto tune." Then she adds, "Jen Lopez needs auto tune. Janet Jackson needs auto tune." And then she went off a fucking cliff and said, "And Beyonce needs auto tune." So what? You get to a point like what? What? And then once you, the motherfucker goes off the cliff, you like, all right, 
fuck everything she said before because yeah, obviously, like, like, I'm gonna obviously, still alive from the ladies and be like, bye, obviously. bitch. Yeah, bye. Obviously, like, get the fuck out of here. Something wrong with like, you. If you gonna throw that, bill, if you gonna throw that in, obviously. And keep in mind, like, majority of those names that she just pointed out have Grammys. Grammys. And get just, the fuck out of here. Like, I'll, I'll have all sorts of awards, and all of a sudden, now they need auto tune. Bitch, please. All right. Like, uh, sh- but, uh, well, she says Adele, Aretha, Celine, Dion, Dion Warwick, and Mariah are the ones that don't need auto tune. They're, they're yeah, but alive. They Mariah's are, a great. fucking drunk that can't even fucking perform. Did you see her last performance at the New Year's Eve thing? Where uh, she I was heard, like I heard super drunk and yeah. had to be let off stage? Like, yeah. The, like, yeah. like she's got her own problems to deal with. Auto tune may not be one of them, but damn it, like she needs to slow down on the drinks before the fucking performance. That is true, but the, all, o- overall, classic Mariah is one of the tops when oh, it comes to vocals. Yeah, yeah oh, you yeah. just got to give it up to her. Yeah, I, uh, I'm a fan. Like we get uh, it. Like, like those. Like I'm not gonna say that those singers like don't exist anymore and everything, but. It's, it, it, you're talking about Shit. different singing styles, yeah. man. Yeah, like definitely. they're not even the same. Like it's categories. not even the same. Yeah. Uh, but I will go back on Wendy Williams just because she did announce that she has Graves' disease and will be taking two weeks off. Although the doctor oh, suggests that uh, she should take three. She said she's only going to take two. What? And I, I had to research this. Graves' disease is an autoimmune disorder that causes overstimulation of the thyroid, which can lead to puffy eyes, anxiety, fatigue, insomnia, and elevated blood pressure. So although I talk shit, she talks shit, you don't ever want to see motherfuckers uh, just have ailments and get hurt. But then again, yeah, that's is, is this karma? I don't know. Hey, I don't want to say that, but uh, I mean, Did, I understand why her eyes are puffy now. Yeah, uh, from what I've heard uh, on like news shows and all that stuff, that it's visual. It's visibly, uh, you can visibly see that something's been wrong with her. They said that, uh, I want to say last week or something, it looked like she almost passed out. Uh, you know, Halloween, she passed out on camera. Yeah. So, um, yeah, her health is... Um, she needs being to take affected. some time off. And, yeah, she needs to take time off. Fucking doctors told her three. She's only taking two. Dude, take the three. Shit, take four. Yeah, I yeah. think you can afford to do that. Yeah. You know, I understand, like, like you know, you got to you gotta take care of yourself. You need to At take care of yourself. At least a minimum, yourself. goddamn. You definitely need to take care of yourself. But that was my last story. I uh, want to say, definitely, if you have not seen Black Panther... Go see Black Panther. Uh, Aaron asked me about the belt. You know, I keeps it handy. Yes, this is my fantasy football championship oh, belt. I did. I did win. And uh, Oh, so you're the undisputed, huh? Undisputed for this oh, year. Oh, shit. The so, champ is here. The, man, you don't understand how many times I heard that. Shit. But uh, for you guys, uh, just like Aaron needs to go and check out the Mad Dub of the Week 24 Carat uh, Mad Dub. If you search that, you can go find the Mad Dub of the Week uh, with this belt and my antics, as you guys know. Yeah. Um, I absolutely appreciate you, man. I appreciate that you come. You give me knowledge like a motherfucker. Uh, I absolutely appreciate that. Uh. <laughs> oh, fuck! I don't mess it up. That's All right, we gonna do it again. Do it again. Wow! Mm, right oh. there. We're so, calling it forever. What? So uh, <laughs> I'm gonna leave y'all. Uh, I know I sh- we started off with Fergie, but I saw something. Oh, speaking of Wakanda, I had to take something from your uh, your social media. Oh God! I had I had to put this up. This is fucking funny. Tyler Perry presents <laughs> Madea Goes to Wakanda. I was so mad at that. that. that I was like, who did this? I love, it. <laughs> I love your reaction. You keep saying, oh, all right, I'm done with the internet. Oh, I'm man. done. But I, that, this shit was fucking hilarious. Like, the internet remains undefeated. Like, there's, they, like if you got pictures out there, like, like, remember, you can get got by anybody that has <laughs> the availability to access Photoshop. You can get got, okay? Uh, it, Trust me, I've gotten got. <laughs> like, that, like this shit is fucking hilarious. That is I saw hilarious. this, my mom was like, "That was petty as hell." That, but it's fucking hilarious. It is. It is. Just like uh, Black Panther can get got, and Fergie, all over. Oh, it's just man. recent. 
she got right, got. Uh, and I'm gonna end a vid, uh, a mad week with the the remix, the remix to the national anthem. Oh uh, shit! Does it hit? Does it hit? You about to see? You gonna be here? Uh, this is George I Court. Right. This is Aaron Atkins. And thank you for watching. This has been a fucking great one. Tell your friends. Tell your family. Like Magic Entertainment on YouTube. Follow me on Facebook, Instagram at a Mad Week. We're gonna keep bringing you some fucking great shows. This was fucking great. I loved it. Thank you. And let's let's. Let's get y'all hip to this fucking shit, man. It's gonna be great. Uh, I can already tell. Uh, where are we at? It's gonna be fucking wrong, ain't it? Yeah. Oh, it's gonna be wrong. To perform the Star Spangled Banner, Fergie. Oh, God. Let a flag watch to God. <laughs> this has been a mad week. We out. Uh, where's the generic outro? Oh, right there. That's fucked up.